So now coming for the basics of electrical engineering, nothing but BWE. Okay, BWE stands for what? Nothing but basics of electrical engineering. And I hope everyone knows who is the father of electricity. Okay, it's a simple question. Okay, but 99% of the people doesn't know who is this. 99% I, I bet, I challenge. Okay, and this will be the interview question, especially for the freshers. The people who are new to this field, either from the electrical department or from any other department, this will be the interview question for them. Okay, who is the father of electricity? Okay, we have done with respect to our electrical engineering from reputed universities across the globe. Okay, but many of them doesn't know who is this. Okay, so in short, I can say that William Gilbert, William Gilbert as well as Michael Faraday is known as father of electricity. Okay, these are the two personalities who work with respect to this department. Okay, very, very, very important concept, especially for the freshers. Now coming for the electron theory. What is meant by electron theory? <clears throat> I hope everyone know what is electron. You can see the first line. Electron is nothing but the elementary particle carrying a unit charge of negative electricity. You can see, this is nothing but an electron. Okay, assume that this is a copper wire. Okay, I have kept this copper wire under electronic microscope. So when you have kept this copper wire under electronic microscope, you can see you'll be having the n number of electrons which are moving with respect to some direction. You can see the aroma that these, uh, these electrons are moving with respect to this side. Okay. So, and this electron theory was discovered in early 19th century. The date is not defined. Okay. Different, different uh, uh, literatures, different, different year has been mentioned. So, for that reason, I am, spe I am specifying only 19th century by two scientists, I think Lawrence and the truth. These two scientists work with respect to this concept. Okay. And in short, what is in my electron theory? In short, for example, I am having a cable, I am having a conductor, okay, I am having a metal piece. So when you keep that metal piece under an electronic microscope, you can see you will be having some n number of electrons and those electrons are passing with respect to any of the direction, either upside, downside, right, left, etc, etc, with any of the angle. But to the same conductor, if you are providing a potential difference, what is potential difference? Nothing but a voltage. So what will happen? This electrons will move with respect to one direction with the speed of light either with respect to positive side or else with respect to negative side. You can see this is the voltage, the plus and minus side. Okay, I am providing a voltage to my copper wire. So what is happening? With respect to the sign value, these electrons are flowing. Okay. So it says that when potential difference, nothing but your voltage is applied to a conductor, the electron present in the conductor will produce some kinetic energy. What is kinetic energy? The rate of doing work. And this kinetic energy will start moving in a definite direction with the speed of light creating electrical pressure. Okay. So these things will move with the speed of light. Okay. By means of that, we are getting some electrical pressure which is called as current. I hope this is clear for everyone now. The electron theory. Now that's coming for the, for the concept of voltage. What is mean by voltage? Okay. So the other name of voltage is nothing but electromotive force. When you work with respect to technical point of view, this voltage is called as EMF, electromotive force, which is nothing but a quantitative expression of the potential difference of power distribution in charge in the two endpoints in the electrical field. For example, this is an electrical field. Now, if you want to measure the amount of voltage, okay, in that case, we have to go with this to the units called as volts or EMF value. Okay, so the greater the voltage, the greater the flow of electrical current means this amount of voltage will provide you the flow of electron, the speed of electrons through a conducting or semiconducting medium for a given resistance to flow. With respect to the resistance value, for example, if the resistance is high, the flow of electrons will be less. It will oppose. When the resistance is less, the flow of electrons will be high. Okay? So the greater the voltage means if the voltage level is high, the flow of electrons will also be high. Okay? And the units for the voltage is nothing but volts. In the symbolic form, we are calling it as V. And this voltage we are measuring by means of voltmeter or multimeter or potential transformer or voltage transformer, etc. Et the means of these equipments, we are going to measure the voltage. Next, we are having the concept of current. What is meant by current? So, an electrical current is a flow of electrical charges. Okay, electrical charges in the sense, negative charges. In the electrical circuit, this often this charge is often carried by moving electrons in a wire. For example, if I'm having a wire and I want to measure the flow of electrons, so that can be done by means of this current value. So in simple words, we can say that the rate of flow of electrons, how many amount of electrons are flowing, that can be called that can be called by means of a current value. So and this is denoted by with respect to the units called as ampere or amps. And in symbolic form, we are calling it as A. And this is measured by means of ammeter, the clamp meter, 
multimeter, current, transformer, etc. etc. So the means of these equipments, we are going to measure the amount of current. We are going to measure the amount of current. Very, very important concepts. Okay. <coughs> Coming for the conductor. What is in the conductor? The name itself indicates which allows a free flow of electrons is called as conductor. As I have told you, okay, so with respect to electricity, we are having electrons. So wherever we can flow the electrons, that is anything but a conducting medium. So it is a material that allows a free flow of electrical current in one or more direction. Okay, with respect to any other direction, you can pass. And the examples are nothing but your copper, aluminium, silver, galvanized iron, gold, platinum, etc., etc., all metals we can say. Okay, some of the conducting materials. In the building industry, for the cables and all, we are going with copper or aluminium. Okay. So GI is used in the worst case, but we are preferring for the copper and aluminium. In the Gulf countries, 90% of the building industry, we will go with copper. Only for transmission side, we will go with aluminium. That's it. Okay. And on, out of all these things, which material is having high amount of efficiency? Nothing but platinum is having almost like 100% of efficiency. But no one can go with platinum because it is expensive than gold for that reason. Okay, so platinum is the best among all the metals. But for the building industry, I repeat again, we are going with copper and aluminium only. Coming for the insulator, okay, nothing but opposite of conductor. So insulator does not allow the free flow of electron, it is opposite of conductor. Example, nothing but your paper, rubber, plastic, Teflon, PVC, polyvinyl chloride, glass and wood, etc. etc. So by means of this, we cannot pass electricity. Okay, by means of this, we can pass electricity. In short, I can say. Next, we are having a semiconductor. So, what is mean by semiconductor? Okay, means the thing which works with respect to the insulation point of view also, which works with respect to conductive point of thing also, that is called a semiconductor. So, it is a combination of insulator as well as a conductor. Okay, nothing but your power electronic devices, your switches, the power electronic switches. So, a semiconductor is a substance, usually a solid chemical element. So, this kind of thing is made by means of a chemical. Okay, that can conduct electricity in the some conditions, but not others, making it a good medium for the control of electrical current. You can see you'll be having different different devices, especially uh, the drives area. Okay, for the machines, for the to run, to, to run a machine, we require a drive panel. So, in the drive panel, we can see we are having different different. Uh, uh, polytonic switches okay like we are having igbts we are having mosfets we are having gtos etc etc and to run your machine in a precise in a precise manner okay we are changing the frequency so because how because of changing the frequency we require this power electronic switches and these polytonic switches are semiconducting in nature so based upon the pulses required these semiconducting switches will be turned on as well as will be turned off so in short, I can say that whenever current is given, it acts as connector. Whenever current is not given, it acts as insulator. Okay, means what? Whenever we are providing the pulse, it acts as insulator. It acts as connector. Whenever we are not providing the pulse, it acts as insulator. An example of this semiconductor, I think, but SCR. I think, but your silicon control rectifier, thyristors, transistors. Okay, this is a very big family. In this, we are having different different things again. Example, I think, but your all polytonic switches. I can say. Okay, so this is a concept what we are having with respect to voltage, with respect to current, as well as with respect to your semiconductors.